project that I'm going to be working on in the near future. I wanted to make a woven sash type uh, strap for it. And to do that, I'm kind of stepping back to something I haven't done in quite a while, um, probably about 20 years, and that's finger weaving. In this case, it's real simple. You just use yarn. Uh, it was something done a lot by Native Americans. It's probably a type of weaving they did pre-contact, but it really came into its own after contact with Europeans uh, when they would take blankets that they traded for and unweave the blankets and then weave the yarns from it into various items. Uh, but what I'm doing right now is I've got 24 strands of yarn here that are about 6 feet long each, 2 yards, and I'm just making some little clove hitches and I'm tying them onto this dowel rod. And the clove hitch is right in the center of the yarn. But I'm tying these on. I'm going to do... I've got two colors. I'm going to do three, three, then um, three, six of the red, and keep going like that. So I should have, um, like I said, 12 of each color. So it'll be three, six, three of the red, and then just groups of three of the silver gray color here. And we're going to work on a chevron type pattern with that. Um, how I'm doing the clove hitches for people who aren't really not people is I make one loop like that and then I make another loop kind of the opposite way so if you look we've got one side where this part coming down is in front and the other side where this part coming in down is behind it and then we just take the one that's behind and put it in front of the other one so that we've got both of those pieces trapped between the loops and then you've got a flying clove hitch. And I just slide that right down onto the dowel rod and work it tight. Okay, the alternate way to explain how to do this knot, which is harder to show people, is you can wrap around one finger and then wrap around your thumb, but you're wrapping kind of a different direction. So it's almost like one motion. So. If you do those, then you can just put it together. So that's mostly what I do with it. But it looks a bit too much like a magic trick to people who are not really good at knots. So here's our, our final, our full setup of what we got going on here. Like I said, I've got three strands, three strands, three strands, then six strands in the middle, basically three and three, uh, and then again three, 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 going down the line. So I've got 24 strands total, uh, and like I said, 12 of each, silver and red, set up like this. And we're going to do a nice little chevron pattern where these are going to come together as open chevrons. Um, you can reverse the pattern as you're going and make diamonds instead. And we're going to have, since we start in the center, we're going to have right in the center of it a diamond and then chevrons going out from it. Okay, since I have my workbench here, I went ahead and tied a piece of leather lace to it and I've got a spring clip tied to the leather lace. That'll be hold on to it. It's not a real strong hold until I get it actually clipped onto this dowel rod, but we're going to start with it not being on that. Um, and let's just go ahead and start braiding. So the way you do this is you every other strand goes up or down so up down up down back and forth like that all the way through and you see that i've got them kind of straightened out nice and neat um, so that's going to be the major part of it is straightening strands out as you go um, you got to kind of untangle them a bit but it'll get easier once you get started. So we've got 12 strands up, 12 strands down. And you got to know for a chevron pattern where your middle is. So we've got these two strands right here in the middle. And one of those strands, we're going to take the one that's to the right, just to the right of the middle, and we're going to pull it to the left. 
and take the one that's just to the left of the middle and pull it out to the right. Like that. Kind of snug. And then these strands are going to swap places. So the ones that are up are going to be down. And you basically, I just kind of push up on one and down on the other. Uh, push up with my middle finger and down with my thumb and then run my index finger through. And these last, uh, tangle it, these strands that we had become our outside strands. And you gotta pay attention to whether they go top or bottom or whatever. And this should all pull together as we're going. But from here on out, it's a lot of the same stuff again and again. Just kind of try and keep track of your strands. Which ones are top, which ones are bottom strands, and so on and so forth. And we're just going to repeat the same pattern again and again. I've done enough here that you can start to kind of see what we're going to wind up with a little bit. You can have these like chains that come down into to each other and keep making these chevrons. Now this, when I get it off of this doll rod and tighten it up, some of these gaps and such will go away a little bit and tighten up on that. Um, but we're going to wind up with something about an inch and three quarter wide it looks like. Um, not quite two inches once we get it all braided up and done. Um, now if you want a wider strap of course you got to more strands or bulkier yarn or both. Um, I've done I think up to 36 strands like this. It's really not that different because you're still just doing the same thing all the time. And there are different patterns you could do. Like I could be doing this where I just grab one strand from this side, pull it through the center of them, and leave it out on this side. And you wind up with just diagonal lines. Actually, they go diagonal. I think the opposite direction. Um, so like if you pull one from over here to here, then the colors are going to drift this way in diagonal lines. You can also do where there's much more complicated patterns where you're pulling things from out of the center and you're pulling them only halfway over and you hook another one around it and then you pull that one the rest of the way and it can get very complicated depending on the patterns that you're trying to do. But for the most part, okay now I'm down to the close to the end of the first side. Some of these pieces are getting too short to really work with. So we're gonna about call it here. Um, you can see the pattern that I've developed here. There was a little bit of backing up and starting again because again, I haven't done this in a long time. But we're gonna go ahead and start taking some of these. We're gonna bundle them up. We got 24. Let's bundle them up in groups of four. You can do three or four. Um, if you want to braid them into single strands, you can do three. It's easier. But I'm just going to tie knots on these because I'm going to use these in a way that it doesn't much matter. I just need it to hold together till I'm ready to use them. So yeah, you just kind of take every three or four of them and just tie a real simple little overhand knot on them. And that'll hold it all together for you. Like I said, you can get more complicated than that if you want to make something more decorative. Once those are tied off, we can just go ahead and give it a little bit of a haircut here. Just about to the length of our shortest one. If you do the um, three strand braids and then tie the end of the braid, you don't wind up with it quite flared as much right here because these knots get wider. Uh, but again, like I said, for what I'm doing, it's not really going to matter because I'm probably going to be cutting this off because I'm using this as a strap and I'll have a piece of leather over top of it. So like I said, that's half of my strap done. Now it's time to pull this out and start our other half. 
which is mostly going to be a little bit of straightening and fiddling with it until we get it all lined up right and tightened down. And then it's back to the exact same braid we've been doing, or weave. Um, swapping all the places and then pulling from the middle. Top in the middle to one side, bottom in the middle to the other side, so that they cross each other. And just exactly the same thing again and again and again. As I mentioned before, you can also use a pillow for these. Um, I grabbed one because I wanted to move away from my bench and just sit on the couch doing this. Uh, it's a lot easier to just move it around when it's on a pillow. And you just safety pin it right on there and just move the safety pin as needed. Now the great thing about these clove edges is you should be able to untie them by just sliding them off. Of course there's a lot of friction with this many of them. So we gotta work them off a little bit. And there we go. So all those are just gonna comb out straight. Now then, let's sort out our strands here. We got a strand that should go to the middle there. Yeah. One, two, one, three. Two, one, two on this side. This side we got something up. All right, so this one needs to come over to the middle. And this one needs to come over to the middle. There we go. Now I've got two, one, two on this side and then three in the middle. And one, two, one on this side. And then we got all of our strands pretty much figured out where they're going to be. Now we're going to swap our strands just like we've been doing. To keep those middle strands where they belong. Now those said middle strands, like I said, that are all messed up at the moment, we're going to go ahead and pull those back out, and they're going to pull tight. Now, let's go ahead and go with that one to that side. one to this side just like we've been doing Now, like I said, we got a couple of these done. Well, let's go ahead and start pulling some things tighter. And evening it all up a little bit. I've got one up here that bothers me. I have to do something about. 
Not the best transition I've ever done, but like I said, it's been 20 years since I've done this, so. But once you got it there, I said then you're back to exactly what you've been doing. Put one from the middle of one side, one from the middle on the bottom of the other side. Swap strands from top to bottom. And just keep doing the same thing. Don't overcomplicate it. If I ever stop and lay them down, this is usually where I stop. I pull two out to the side, keep my strands separated, pulled off to the side like that. And now I'm going to go let the whimpering dog go outside. Okay, just to kind of recap exactly what I'm doing on all this. And it's, like I said, pretty much the same every time. I've got my string separated in two groups. I keep them straight. I'm keeping a finger between them to separate them. And then a couple fingers clamped onto them to hold them tight. We'll put these back down into the bundles where they belong. One on one side on top, one on the other side on the bottom. Pull the center strand that's on top. In this case, I pull to the left and then pull the bottom strand to the right. That kind of just depends on how you have it set up and what you want to do. I mean, it's kind of a little misnomer to call it the center strand because there's 12 strands on top, 12 strands on bottom. And I'm winding up with Six on one side and five on the other. And if I flip, flip it over, it's going to be the same on the other one. Only I'll have five on this side of it and six on that side. So like I said, so those two cross in the center. And then I'm going to swap the strands on top to the strands on bottom. I do that by pushing down on one, pushing up on the other with a finger, and put my index finger between them. I just work my way across. Um, get it on camera a little better there. Then yarn tends to stick together, so you push it up. And then comb out any that are stuck together on the way down. Put those back down in and you repeat. One to this side. One to that side. Swap your strands. We're going to go a few more of these, but some of these strands are starting to get kind of short. And I think I've got about enough of it done for the strap I want to make. Now, uh, basically, I kind of do this until I start having strands like this one. That when I'm flipping them around, they start slipping out. And then I decide, oh, I'm pretty much done. So, I'll go ahead and start tying these off. And just like on the other side, I'm going to take bundles of about four of them. Tie them together. Okay, now weaving like this, just like with leather braiding, can benefit a little bit from being kind of rolled smooth, worked back and forth across something or so on, uh, just to even it out a little bit. And some oddities in it will, over time, kind of work their way out. I do have a couple spots here that are too loose where I transitioned from one side to the other that I could probably try and tighten those in, work on them a little bit, but I'm not too worried about them for what I'm going to use it for because this is going to be a project for myself. I'm just using a chunk of PVC pipe to smooth that out a bit. But anyway, you can see the pattern that we got here. Small chevrons made of almost like chains. 
And you could do the same thing just starting with uh, half the half of one color on the outside and all the one other color on the inside and make wider chevrons like this pattern which this is one of those that I did about 20 years ago um, there's also if you just pull a strand from one side and just pull it through all the strands rather than pulling them from the middle and just strand comes from over here to over here just back and forth across well, then you'll wind up with a pattern like this, where you have um, diagonal lines. Another one that you can do with chevron is where they can alternate like this, kind of a uh, almost houndstooth type pattern. And that's just you start with all of one color on one side and all the other color on the other side. Uh, this is, of course, less strands to be a narrower um, this one is about an inch wide, uh, maybe three quarters when you stretch it tight, and it looks like it's made from looks like it's made from about ten strands of pretty chunky yarn. Whereas this one's pretty similar to what I just did. It might even be a few more. It might have been thirty instead of um, twenty-four. But you get the general idea.